All right, we're going to talk about some cardiac physiology with this, looking at the cellular level. So what I've got drawn here is I have the SA node, I've got a cardiac myocyte. We're going to draw the neurophysiology, the waveform for the SA node, and then we're also going to draw the, um, the physiology for the cardiac cell. But first what we're going to do is we're just going to look at what's taking place, the different types of channels that we have on the SA node. So we're going to call this our SA node, okay? This is our myocyte. Now, the SA nodes and the myocytes have gap junctions that connect them. And so, as you already know from your reading and the videos, that the SA node will spontaneously depolarize. The SA node has some channels on it. So, one of the first ones we want to draw here is what's called an IF channel. It's called an IF channel because they're kind of funny. And so, when researchers first found them, they called them ion funny channels. Now, they're just called IF channels or ion flow channels. But what IF channels do is they allow sodium to come in, the cell, and potassium to go out. Now, if I have an IF channel open, I'm going to have faster inflow of sodium than I have efflux of potassium. The reason for that is because even though chemically they're going to flow at equal rates, what's going to take place is I have negatively charged anions in here, which attract the positive charge of sodium. So sodium flows faster in, the potassium flows out. So since that takes place, what's happening is as sodium comes in, it brings its positive charge, and we're going to see an upward deflection going like this, moving towards negative 40. So right here, my IF channels are open, and I have sodium moving into the cell. As I move up this direction, I'm going to open another class of channel. This next one is called a T-type calcium channel. T stands for transitory. So these are going to pop open, but then they're going to pop back closed. So as IF channels are opening, moving up this direction, and the positive charge is coming in, now the positive charge of calcium is coming inside too. So here I've got this overlap of the T-type opening, um, IF channels opening the T-type calcium channels right here. When I reach threshold, a different population are going to open. Because now at threshold, what's going to take place is I'm going to open up my L-type calcium channels. The L-type calcium channels are going to allow me to do this, move up this direction. So I'm having the, this depolarization of the SA node. Now what's taking place, though, is inside the cell, I have all of this potassium. I've got about 135 milliequivalents of potassium inside the cell. As these positive charges come in, what's going to happen is these positive charges of potassium are going to be displaced because like charges will repel. So it's like taking two positive magnets and if I move one towards the other, it's going to push it away. So the positive charges of calcium and sodium are displacing uh, potassium into this myocyte. Well, let's finish off this. So the L-type calcium channels up here, what's happening is I've is as I move this direction, I've closed my IF channels, I've closed my transitory T-type calcium channels, I've opened my L-type calcium channels, and right here I open my potassium channels. So now the potassium channels open up, and not only is potassium being displaced this way, it's going to go outside the cell, it takes its positive charge with it, and it starts to move us back towards resting membrane potential. Now, during this part right here, I had closed the IF channels because IF channels close right about here. The, the T-type calcium channels close about the same spot. They're closed during the opening of the L-type calcium channels. But as I move back down here, all of a sudden, the IF channels pop back open again. And that's why they're called ion funny because most channels will open as I'm depolarizing. These open up as I repolarize. So now my IF channels pop open again. And so this just happens just time and time and time again. So the SA node wants to spontaneously depolarize at, the, about, the rate, uh, at about a rate of 100 times um, per minute. And so, of course, your heart's not going to beat that fast. That's because you're downwardly modulating it um, through the use of the vagus nerve and the release of, of acetylcholine. And we're going to look at that here in just a bit. So now we're at my myocyte. Now, why this was spontaneously depolarizing, this cell over here, the myocyte, it was at rest at, a, at approximately about 90 millivolts, negative 90 millivolts, where this was negative 60. Now here at negative 90 millivolts, I do have a channel open. I have one called the inward rectifier potassium channel. Now, 
inward rectifier means that I'm rectifier means I'm, I'm going to correct for something. I'm going to rectify for something. And so here's what's taking place is potassium, this channel's open, and so potassium goes out. Potassium goes out along its chemical gradient. But as it goes out along its chemical gradient, we still have these large proteins in here, these anions that attract it back in. So potassium goes out, takes its positive charge, but now it's become more negative inside, and so it comes right back in. So it's inwardly rectified its outward movement. It goes out along a chemical gradient, comes back in along an electrical gradient. If just left on its own, I'm going to see something like this. It goes out, it comes in, it goes out, it comes in, and I never can reach threshold. However, when the SA node fires off, because it's um, gated, I have the gap junctions that allow the potassium ions to push their charge across, it is going to pop open another type of, of voltage-gated channel. So what I'm going to see is I'm going to see the opening of the sodium channels. So these are voltage-gated sodium channels. So right here, I have sodium that comes rushing into the cell. So now sodium is rushing into the cell, and that's why you see the strong up spike right here, because I have about 140 mil equivalents of sodium outside the cell and about oh, 12 to 14 mil equivalents inside the cell. So sodium is falling its electrical chemical gradient into the cell. Now, as I reach right here, sodium channels are gonna close. And at that point, another type of channel pops open, and I get this little downward deflection because the next channel that's going to open is my, my um, transitory potassium channels. So I have this transitory potassium channel, and what happens is it leaves the cell, okay? But as it leaves the cell and takes its positive charge with it, with it I get this little downward um, spike right here. And, that, and, and at that point, I have another type of channel that's going to pop open. I'm going to open my L-type calcium channels. So now my L-type calcium channels pop open and calcium starts to come into the cell. Now, here's what's interesting. Let's back up a little bit because when we're looking at the phases, down here I have what's called phase 4. Okay, This is phase 4, moving this direction. At that point, it was the inward rectifier potassium channels that were open and nothing was taking place because it would move in it would come it would move out and then come back in but when I pushed the charge through here it popped open my voltage gated sodium channels that is phase zero the next channel to open was the t-type potassium channel I had this little downward deflection at phase one because the positive charge was moving out making it more negative and then because the L-type calcium channels opened, I now swing out this way on my plateau. But notice something. If calcium was the only thing coming in, I wouldn't move this direction. I would be moving this direction. Okay, so something else is taking place. The other thing that's taking place is I'm opening my delayed um, rectifier potassium channels. So these are delayed potassium channels. Okay. And as these delayed open, potassium moves out as calcium moves in. And so potassium moving out wants to take me this direction. Calcium coming in wants to take me this direction. But what they do is they, it, the, the net effect is it moves me along this axis right here. So this is phase two. All right. Now right here, something else is going to happen. What's going to happen here is my calcium channel is going to close. If my calcium channel closes, I'm going to only have potassium moving out, taking its positive charge with it, and so now I'm at phase three. So these delayed potassium channels are open, but now they're starting to close. As the delayed potassium channels close, the inward rectifier potassium start, channels start to pop back open. So I come all the way back down here. I'm closing my delayed, opening my inward rectifier potassium channels, and I go back to phase four. And so I've just completed a, a single heartbeat, and now I'm going to wait for the SA node to give me the next heartbeat. All right, we're going to stop there.